If you're anything like me, the streaming services to which you subscribe are running a little dry. The WhatsApp groups that you're in, all of them, will have texts from friends and you to them, asking for recommendations of the next thing to watch and people aren't coming up with the goods. Well, the rake to the rescue. Today, we have a video on how to cut and light a cigar. Now, the thing to know about cutting a cigar is that a lot of people talk about a ceremony that should be involved with the whole thing. I'm here to tell you which of those are true and which of those are not. And to demonstrate, I've gone to my little box of goodies and selected a couple of cigars that I'm going to cut, varying sizes, and using various uh, ways of cutting to demonstrate which is used and why. The first item we're going to talk about is the punch. Here it is. This is one from Davidoff, small enough to be on your set of keys. And frankly, what could be better to come to the rescue to somebody than having a cigar cutting implement on your set of keys? So always keep this on you. This one has a uh, double, double, it has two punches on it. So you twist one way, it has a larger ring gauge size and then twist the other and well, small. The, uh, the story behind the punch, because a lot of people talk about uh, how one might show deference to the roller by using a punch because you're not cutting off the head of the, uh, the cigar, which is this top bit here, which is the sort of the finish finishing part of, of, of the cigar rolling process. Um, but actually, I don't think that is true at all. And, and, and nobody I know from the business really believes that. I think that the roller himself would much prefer that you actually enjoyed the cigar and, and you know, smoked it. So whether you cut the head off or not, it just doesn't really matter to him. It's just as long as you enjoy it. The reasoning behind it is that there is a smaller um, surface area uh, created for the smoke to get out from, and that creates a, uh, a, a more sort of powerful um, surface area smoke coming onto the tongue, which, so for flavor purposes, that's really the reason why the punch exists. So. I'm going to use a smaller ring gauge size, and this is a Upman Regalia, which has recently come out from uh, Cuba. It's part of uh, the new, actually, they're quite nifty packaging, these new tins that they come in, which I really like. And I think that uh, if Cuba are getting into a new habit of uh, packaging uh, uh, flair, then, you know, all power to them. I think that that should keep going. Now, very simple. Take the punch. This is nice and used, it should be nice and sharp and you push in and you'll watch the cigar sink into the punch and then you release and it's created a hole. Now you can light, smoke, enjoy. The next thing we're gonna look at is the straight cut. As we're carving turkeys or chickens or meat, any kind of meat really, the key is not just technique, but having a sharp blade and so it is with the straight cut. This is what I use. I have, uh, I've had this for a very long time. It's called Angels. I picked it up at David of St. James Street and it's always worked for a very long time. Uh, but the moment it goes blunt, it's useless to me. So I'm gonna get another one. Uh, it's, this is the most straightforward of the, uh, of the cutting um, implements you have. Create the aperture by opening this up, putting the cigar inside and there you go. The final thing we're going to look at today is this, it's the V-cut. Uh, it's something actually that has been around quite a long time. In fact, it was around just as long as the straight cut has been. And the straight cut used to be only applicable for smaller ring gauges. In fact, I have this here. This is something that my wife gave me a long time ago. This is a saving chip. It's actually a cigar cutter. But as you can see, the actual cutting uh, aperture is very, very small and so only a sort of cheroot would fit into there. So there's not much that's out today that this would work for. And it was, so it was for the old straight cuts and the V is what came into play back then. So what is really the theory behind this ultimately is that the V shape it creates when you cut into the cigar creates a wider surface area of tobacco that has been cut and therefore the draw should be better in comparison to a straight cut. Now the actual difference in terms of numbers, I'm not gonna be able to give you. 
but it is for many people something that they really like using. Some people even do a kind of double, like an X cut. Uh, we won't do that today, we're just going to do a, a, a single V cut. And uh, this is in celebration of Chinese New Year. This is the Davidoff Year of the Ox limited edition one, which I'm going to cut into. Now, it's a Davidoff, so it's probably extremely good from a construction point of view anyway, so it would have well, but nevertheless, this is what we're going to use it for. So with this, this is a terrific uh, Calibri uh, V cut and uh, it's brand new, so it should, so should be super sharp. And here we go. Now, as you can see, it has created a nice V shape. Hopefully you can see that. And you can, nice, just push down, opens up again, cleans out. The good thing about this actually is that there is a straight cut on this side, but you know, there we go. So now that that hole is created, it is pretty much straight down to lighting up. Now that the cutting is done, we can move on to the lighting of the cigar. In the interest of time, uh, I'm not going to demonstrate how to use a match. That's fairly straightforward. Um, I would, I would like to talk about, however, is this thing here. This is your Commodore Garden sort of Bic lighter type implement. Now, if you think that this is not good enough for your smoking apparatus, let me tell you that Edward Tahakian of Davidoff keeps one of these on him at all times. And if it's good enough for him, then it really is good enough for everybody else. So don't poo-poo something as simple as this. If you're gonna light a cigar, the point of it is to be lit and smoked and enjoyed, and it will be enjoyed if you use one of these. However, I'm going to take, pull out this. This is a DuPont lighter. The reason I quite like this is that it has the double flame, but then also it has a jet attached to it too. These are available at therake.com, of course. So, now we smoke. Just a note on the orange flame that you don't have to have it in your mouth to, to light it. But I mean, the process is a lot longer if you don't. Someone like Nick Fouts is very good at this, forming a nice carbon crust at the foot of the cigar. It takes a little bit of time, a little bit genteel, uh, but uh, perfectly doable if that's the way you want to do it. And I guess has a little bit more of ceremony uh, to the process. However, if you want to speed things up, you can use a blue flame. This is a very fast way of doing things, but there are ways also in doing this that can scorch the cigar in a way you don't want to and here's a couple of ways of avoiding those mistakes so this is the jet lighter i'm going to use today i i'm going to use it because um it is the kind of the big version of uh jet lighters you can get some table amazing table lighters with the jet flame as i said with the uh with the dupont there's a uh, jet flame as well as the orange flame so um, uh, this is this is something you can pick up for not a huge amount. This is actually a Edward Sahakian version, new, and um, thank God, frankly, it's around to help me ignite my cigars. Um, here we are with um, the Upman, and uh, so what you want to do, keep a little bit of distance from the flame to the cigar, otherwise you're going to burn all the way down if you go a little bit off the end, and, um, and frankly, who needs that in their lives? Uh, watch... Come in, um, this is the way I do it. You come in a little bit closer, having started from further away. When you start seeing it igniting at the end, that's the distance you want to be at. And just slowly rotate and let it catch all the way around. So there we are, it's beginning to catch. Now you just do circles, making sure all the sides are burned. And soon enough, You'll see it retain its orange glow, and then you know that it's ready to go. One thing I will say on top of this is that if a cigar is lit and burns unevenly, there are a couple of reasons this could happen. One is construction, 
And the other is that it's just in terms of how you've lit it and you've lit one side and not the other half of it. The trick to this is ultimately light it again, but also to catch it up, turn it so it is at the top because obviously heat rises and uh, it will help to burn it, uh, you help it burn a little bit quicker and hopefully even up with the rest of the cigar. It's not the biggest disaster in the world, uh, but it just keeps a nice, uh, uh, perfectly burning cigar. Thank you.